What's going on guys? Coming back to you guys again with another video. This is Sunday night and it's the q and I do every Sunday night. And what that is, is I go to my Instagram, I post a picture and I randomly pick 10 questions and also pick some questions off my Facebook as well. Uh, so definitely add me on social media if you haven't already. All my info will be right there. You guys can check it out. Um, I always love responding to messages, comments and everything like that. So definitely add me if you haven't already. So without further ado, let's get to those questions. Alrighty, and the first questions are gonna be from my Facebook. And the first one's gonna be from Aiden Emsley who asks, top three condiments and worst three condiments. I know you're a sauce boss and like your condiments, so I'm sure you can decide this pretty quickly. So top three condiments of all time, vera teriyaki, ranch dressing, and ketchup. Worst three condiments, mustard, vinaigrette dressing, and relish. And the next one's gonna be from Maximus Mendel who asks, do you think a high protein and high healthy fat diet is good for cutting, give me some advice. That one's pretty complicated. I think everybody's built differently and I feel like uh, it's definitely best to uh, to experiment with those types of diets. Uh, I definitely think that uh, if you are active and you are moving around a lot more, you're gonna require more carbohydrates. I recommend and advocate high carb diets for 99% of people that ask questions like these. Uh, so definitely try things out and see what works best for you. Alrighty, so we're gonna go to Instagram now. And so the first question is gonna be from Anthony Vika, who's also a really, really awesome subscriber. He asks, Eric, what would you like to say to the subscribers who've been there since the beginning? And my response to that question is a big thank you to every single one of you. Uh, and uh, I know Anthony, probably started subscribing a few months ago, but there have been subscribers that are, have been here before Anthony and uh, have been here since last year, right around this time, and actually a little bit over a year ago when I started really getting more subs to my channel. I was at like, I think like 150 subscribers last year, uh, last January of 2015. So just a huge thank you to you guys. I wouldn't be able to do this, or I wouldn't actually have the motivation to do all this if it weren't for you guys. You guys really pushed me to, uh, to move forward with this and have, uh, made me realize that I have a passion for this and I want to continue to do this. So, alrighty, and the next one's going to be from Dumpster Dan 3 who says, What type of cycling workouts do you do on the road or is it always just a normal ride? I've uh, mentioned this a lot actually. Uh, most of my riding when I am on, out on the road is actually primarily climbing. Uh, so, uh, the bottom line for me is if you guys want to progress with your cycling and you want to get better with your cycling, you gotta climb hills. Hills are always gonna be there. So I feel like uh, it's best to uh, to challenge yourself. And essentially what I do, like for example, this morning, I uh, got out in the morning and I uh, was able to get two hours in uh, just doing repeats. And repeats, you'll hear me say that a lot, repeats, repeats, repeats. Repeats are a phenomenal way to build your stamina, overall power on the bike and just get a really good workout in. And the next one's gonna be from Azer Bear, who says, did you deal with body dysmorphia during your eating disorder and how did you recover? So this question is actually a really fantastic question and the answer is actually no. Uh, contrary to popular belief, not all eating disorders have to do with body image or body dysmorphia issues. Uh, my eating disorder really stemmed from me uh, being real previously overweight and uh, just a fear of wanting to, uh, and just a fear of ever going back to that point. Um, I always had really, uh, most most of my eating disorder issues really revolved around uh, obsessive compulsive disordered uh, tendencies and a lot of just ritualistic, just weird um, control issues. Um, I, say, I say the word weird loosely, obviously, but it's obviously weird to the average person that doesn't really go through something like that. But yeah, most of my issues really just revolved around control. And that's essentially what all eating disorders are. Is you're focused on a state of control and denial that you're really not in control. So that's essentially what I was in. This one's gonna be from Hanan Marie who asks, have you ever had people tell you that you having a YouTube channel and doing your challenges was stupid? Like if someone you personally know wants you to stop, if so, what do you do about it? Um, this isn't really something I get very frequently. Most people that see a guy eating a bunch of food uh, actually think it's pretty cool. Uh, for the most part, I haven't really gotten any of these types of people. Uh, now, I mean, it would be, I now now comments now online it's very very common i would say probably once every day or actually multiple times a day i get this comment that people tell me that i'm wasting food that i'm um contributing to uh people's other that i'm contributing to people's eating disorders by posting stuff like this and um i'm just i'm a horrible human being and really guys it's just an opinion i mean at the end of the day you're entitled to your opinion you're entitled to your beliefs uh, and that's why I don't really respond to most of these comments is because I'm not 
going to be doing anything. I'm not going to be changing your view uh, over at YouTube comments. So I just simply don't say anything. And the next one's going to be from Sammy Blue who asks, over the time of your life, what was the most fun food challenge you've tried? Whew, wow. Uh, this is going to be hard. Uh, this question is going to be pertaining to a challenge that I've done in a restaurant because it's awesome to be doing a, um, a challenge where you have a huge, whether it be a burger, um, whether it be a big pile of pancakes or breakfast platter or anything like that in front of you and you have people cheering you on and people uh, just looking at people's faces when they uh, when you look up and they're just they're just starstruck they have no idea what they're watching uh, is it's just it's a, such an awesome feeling for this I'll definitely have to say my favorite challenge was actually doing the broken yolk uh, that was my first ever food challenge and um, I did it I walked in and uh, had the manager look at me in disbelief because my cousins were right next to me they're ex football players uh, all over six feet around you know over 200 pounds and everyone and thinks that they're gonna do it and uh, fast forward about 40 minutes later and I'm the guy setting the record at that location and they could barely finish uh, I would say about 10% of their plates so I actually ended up eating their food afterwards which is uh, which is funny I was just picking at it after I finished mine and actually got offered a job after that so it was a uh, it was just an amazing experience Alrighty, and the next one's gonna be from A. McCon C, another loyal subscriber. Uh, do you think fitness trackers, MyFitnessPal for example, are tr dangerous for people with eating disorders as it could encourage you to go under your calories if one wants to lose weight? Fantastic question. Uh, and I'm gonna address this in two different aspects. Uh, fitness trackers, one being calorie calculators and um, you know those type of types of apps, and fitness trackers being uh, like Fitbits. People actually seem to think this is a Fitbit, but it's not. It's just a bracelet. Uh, so Fitbits and uh, those types of things, body media fits that can go on here. Uh, I definitely think that um, on one hand, uh, fitness trackers, uh, calorie calculators are great tools uh, for people that can actually get a, a sense of where they're at, what they're eating at, uh, but you should never, ever, ever go by what they estimate you to, to take in on a daily basis. That's just, it's a general estimation. You should never go by those macronutrient numbers, uh, never go by percentages, and never go by anything it recommends at all. You should develop that through uh, a proven formula. Um, uh, I believe it's called the Cash McCardle formula, which is somewhat accurate, but at the end of the day, if you're gonna go um, by anything, you should just really go by what you see in the mirror and how you feel on a daily basis in your gym performance. You guys know I preach that constantly. And on the other hand, I am not a fan at all of Fitbits or any of those types of devices. I feel like they're great, again, tools for those people who struggle to get active, who have jobs that require them to be sitting for long periods of time, who just don't really know how to be active. Uh, it can be a good wake-up call, if you want to say, for them uh, to just get up and move more. But other than that, they're pretty much useless. Next one's gonna be from Pineapple Soul, who asks, what was your favorite thing to do when you were younger? Straightforward answer to this one, World of Warcraft. And the next one's gonna be from D Brainhard, who asks, how did you come up with your powerlifting routine? Was it more of doing and finding segments and lifts that you enjoy and been more beneficial than reading an exercise article or more of learning from friends' regimens? Uh, so pretty much neither with that. Again, despite what everybody thinks, I've actually been lifting for uh, going on seven years now. And uh, you pretty much have an intuition at that point of what you need to do on a, on a weekly basis. And that's pretty much how I base my uh, routine, I guess you could say. I've always stated that I just, right now with, with the way I ride and uh, my lifestyle, my schedule with work, with school, I just aim to get in uh, compound movements, bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, at least one time per week and make sure to do my accessory work. It's really that simple. Um, and I base it every day on how I feel. For example, today I trained legs and um, you know, usually I go heavy every single week, uh, one time per week. Uh, and I just felt like listening to my body and just taking a little deload, if you wanna say, and uh, that's how I approached it. This one's gonna be coming from Yasen M who asks, food ingredient or specific dish you will miss the most going vegan? Oh man, this one's hard again. Oh, I don't know about this one. This one's pretty hard. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna miss my ranch dressing, but thankfully they make vegan ranch dressing. It's just honestly not as good. And the last one's gonna be from Tom Cotter who asked, do you think someone who suffered from something like binge eating disorders properly addressing their issue by adhering to a 100% strict diet without any small cheats 
or is it just like putting a band-aid over a wound? Uh, yes, it is like putting a band-aid over a big wound because you are setting yourself up for failure essentially. Um, you first need to work on normalizing your relationship with food before you commit to a, a, a strict diet and I actually never even recommend a strict diet anyways because it's just going to lead you downwards into craving more of these foods. The more you reject them out of your diet in your life, it's going to make you think about them more, you're going to crave them and eventually you will succumb to urges and the binge will happen. So never ever 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 fall into that trap of needing so never ever ever fall into that trap of needing to uh, fixate on this this clean strict diet because it's just going to lead you into a downward spiral. All right, guys. So that's the Q and A. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm uh, lo I re I really like doing these every Sunday. So uh, look forward to more posts um, every Sunday, usually around three or four p.m. Uh, Pacific time. I usually post up a picture on my Instagram again follow my social media up there it'll be on the screen if you guys haven't already hit me with those comments uh, let me know if you want me to answer a question for next week in the comments below and of course guys don't forget to like the video subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for the next one see you guys